last morning we have here on the Ganga in this beautiful yoga festival with so many kirtan, so many artists coming and giving testimony of their appreciation. It's, it's very, very beautiful union we can we can celebrate here and of course after that we have to live up to it and that is the second part of life living up to your ideals we have heard a lot of things these days especially from Bruce Lipton he gave some very deep insights into consciousness from the quantum physics point of view and how we influence Bajarangi Bali, Hanuman Kijai, and how actually we cannot say that we are the product of the genes and thus just obliged to behave in a certain pattern. But he very clearly proves this in an amazing way, scientifically, in his uh, epigenetic signs that we are actually consciousness and in our free will, in our consciousness, we are directing our plan and our paths. Of course, we can take good association, sadhusanga, no? Get fired up and do things better. No doubt about it. But at the same time, uh, we are also very lazy and we like to blame it on destiny, blame it on the world, blame it on the politics, blame it on anything else that we are not who we could be or should be. So, very beautiful, really. It's highly appreciated the contribution which comes from Bruce's side and also the application part of uplift is something very important because it really has the spirit uplifting that's what yoga does it uplifts you you know it's actually an elevator huh? it goes like shoo, goes right to the top if you want to go to the top because when you're in the elevator you you also choose on which one of the floors you want to get out <laughs> if you if there's like the chakras at different floors no you can go by the chakra which floor you want to get out if you want to get out at the lower floor then you will not have the vision of what's up there on the top floor and uh, this is same example can be given to a stairway the stairway may be something somewhat ordinary, but nevertheless, every step you go a little higher, your view changes. Especially in Mayapur, we can see that because we have this very tall building there on the Ganga and on the Yamuna. And when you're going up there, wow, everything changes just by one step more. And five steps already changes the panorama tremendously. So because it's an open stair, it's some very beautiful, amazing thing. <clears throat> so, <coughs> this is the letter of life. Whether you practice yoga or you don't practice yoga, you're on the letter of life. And it does go up. Noticeably, it goes up, or you can also go down. And you can also procrastinate on one step, say, doesn't look like it's worse to go up, doesn't look like it's worse to go down, so I just stay here. So, but the letter of life is anyhow pushing you forward. Because if you don't go up by the stairs, then you go down by the age. <laughs> Your body will get more frail and more. Something happens all the time. Nobody can say, I'm unaffected by what surrounds me. So, very grateful on this path. Actually, if we go into the bhakti literature, they have given a clear guidance. They have said, first comes Agyata Sukriti. 
Agyata Sukriti is when you have the heart at the right spot and you do the right thing, but you don't even understand why and you don't have much philosophy to it. Then after Agyata, Agyata means unconscious, but Sukriti is something very, it's like a, a saving. You save up something amazing, wonderful, valuable. The savings you do. So Sukriti is the, the yoga savings. <laughs> it, it works. And Krishna mentioned it from life to life. The yoga savings will carry you forward. So, but then if you say, hey, wait a second. I am doing this and I'm feeling good about it. Yes, very nice. You feel good about it. Then what about doing some Gyata Sukriti? What is Gyata Sukrit? It means conscious process of punya, of purification, repentance, gratefulness. This is, it is a, a, a step in the consciousness where you are so grateful of everything you have received that you always feel like how do I reciprocate? How do I respond to this? I have to do something nice. Like Alindi, she, uh, she's a great designer. Mm? But sometimes this, sometimes that, and then she thinks, but I have to do something for Krishna, yes. And then she makes another nice project. Huh? And then she says, mm, now I want to do something else. But it's like everybody in us, no? We have to do something better and better and better. Yata Sukriti. That is our, uh, it's a wise saving mentality, but it's something else as well. Because Sukriti, let's say you have a certain bank balance of Sukriti. Now you can trade it in for mystic powers. Let's say you have been a yogi practicing long time, have worshipped Mother Durga, hmm? have practiced some tantric arts, and now it is possible you can get some mystical power, but you will have to give your Sukriti in return. <laughs> then it is your choice. Or you can say, no, 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 I'm not interested in this, in this mystic power. I want to keep my Sukriti for something real. Because mystic powers, well, yogi can fly in the air, airplane also flies in the air. You just pay jet airways, they give you a ticket, so then you have the mystic flying power. <laughs> no. And so many other things. Mystical powers which are there, which are not very charming for the final goal. But if you go for it, then you can also trade in your Sukriti for Brahman realization. You can achieve Mukti, Moksha. Then you will, I, everything I accumulated, I will give here and I become liberated. Or somebody else say, no, 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 don't do that. First you go to Swarga. You can live in Swarga. Swarga is heavenly planets. They are so beautiful, so amazing. There's a description of Swarga in the Bhagavatam. It says the mangoes are big like elephants. Wow. And when they fall down, they break open and the little mango juice river starts flowing. <laughs> so the description of Swarga is wow, wow. And you may think, well, why should I not go to Swarga? Like people in this world, let me go to uh, Beverly Hills. Let me go to <laughs> Bangkok. Let me go to, to live in the, with the fancy people. You know, everywhere in the world, fancy people live in posh areas no? for the rich. And so you think, should I not live there also? <laughs> huh? So you have so many options and so much sacrifice is to be taken if you want to fulfill those options. Same way you can go to Swarga. 
You want to get there? But if you are very intelligent, then you will see that in Swarga, there's also problems. I will tell you one, one story. It's a pretty tough story, but the Shastras are, they cure us by cutting the illusion. So Indra, the king of heaven, not just anybody, the king of heaven, he has a guru. His, his guru's name is Brihashpati. And the wife of Brihashpati is Sachi, a very beautiful, gentle lady. So one time Brihashpati was on a journey and Indra met Sachi and he became sexually attracted to his guru's wife. He had made some advance, I don't know, there's no detail given. I don't think they, they fell down because she's a very chaste woman, Sachi. Anyhow, when Brihaspati came back, who was the guru of, is the guru of Indra, his wife told him, you know what this guy did? King of heaven, he made some sexual advances to me. Brihaspati said, no, it cannot be. He called Indra, did you do that? Indra had to put down his face. Okay. Then you're not qualified for the Indra post. As a matter of fact, you behaved like a hawk, indiscriminate. So I sent you to be born in planet Earth, here, this one here, as a hawk. You go there. Indra lost all his luster, left his body because of the power of Brihaspati, and came to the earth into the womb of a hawk. Then he was born as a little piggy, he grew up, got married, got a, a hog wife, <laughs> and had lots of little piggies. And then we had a problem. In Swarga, there was no more king. King was gone, was sent to planet Earth. And administration, even in Swarga, they had administrative problems. So they went to Lord Brahma. He said, what to do? Look at this mess here. It's like a temple without a temple president. That's a mess. That's why we need the Mahantas to, to look after the affairs. So then Brahma said, what, what to do? He, he, Brihaspati sent him there. Yes, but you are Lord Brahma. You can do something about it. You are so powerful. Please relieve him from the curse. So then Lord Brahma said, okay, I will go. So he went, Lord Brahma came to planet Earth and he met the hog, which had been Indra. And he said, Indra, what? <laughs> you have to come with me. There's problem in Indraloka, in Swarga. You have to go back. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy here. <clears throat> Look at my hog wife, my piggies. What is this you want me to go away? No, Brahma said. Swarga is heaven. You're living here in a pig life, all dirty. Come on, stop it. No, I'm not going. Go away. Leave me alone. I'm very happy. <laughs> then, no, Brahma didn't know what to do. Because even on that level, some freedom exists, no? And finally, Lord Brahma decided, I will take away his hog wife. So Lord Brahma took away his hog wife. And Indra was crying, my wife, my wife, why you take away my wife? She's so nice, my life companion. Gone. <laughs> Come to Swarga. No, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going. <laughs> why not? 
My piggies. <laughs> Who's gonna look after my piggies? <laughs> Brahma said, Come now, I have no time. Waste my time with you here. <laughs> <laughs> and now Brahma said, okay, take the piggy away. No, what are you doing? Take another piggy. Are they ready to come? No, no, no. Finally, he had to take all the piggies away from Indra. When there was no more wife and no more piggies, then Indra was very depressed. You are a bad man. <laughs> you have no feeling for family. Are you? Now I go with you because I have no more business here. <laughs> so he returned to Swan. Oh. Uh, but that's dramatic, isn't it? Now that's in the Vedas. I don't make up those stories. That's exactly what I heard from my spiritual master. So you want to go to, you really want to go to Swarga? We also hear that sometimes big Asuras, they invade Swarga. Sometimes people like Ravana, like, uh, like Hiranyakashipu, they actually go there and give trouble to the devas and make, one time Indra had to become a personal servant of Hiranyakashipu. Can you imagine from the king of heaven put slavery in Swarga? You can call that. So if you are intelligent and you listen to these stories, you say, sorry, no swarga for me. Thanks a lot. I will not give my sukriti for enjoying in swarga. So what's the business with this sukriti? <coughs> what shall you do with this sukriti? Well, you should save it for love. For divine love. That is the only valuable goal to, to get for all your efforts, for all your sukriti, to get divine love. If you do that, you will be so highly rewarded. But let us see what is the process of gaining love. Let us go the step by step, because the, after Gyata sukriti, Gyata sukriti also means Sanatana Dharma. When you follow Sanatan Dharma, that means Sukriti every day, Sukriti. Because proper behavior, proper consciousness, proper advancement. So the Yata Sukriti takes you to become a very sober man. Very sober. And when you become sober, then you will choose for good association. You will search out Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shasta Koi, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi. All perfection can be achieved by association of a Sadhu, even for a short fragment of time. So, the Sadhu Sangha, then you will try to find some real connection. That is the spiritual master. That is called Guru Karan. After Sadhu Sangha, you hear from so many Sadhus, you say, yes, the Sadhus are wonderful, but I want to have a guardian of myself. The guardian of myself the guardian of myself, that is a divine trickery. Because sadhus, they are like shiksha gurus. They give good instructions, and you can take them, take them, take them, and keep them. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, so good. But when you go to a sadhu who says, please make me your shishya, then that sadhu cannot run away from you anymore. This is very, <coughs> very tricky. That's my guru they've explained to me. Because otherwise the shiksha gurus, they go hither and thither. 
they are moving around this world. But if you're becoming a shishya, then you can say, Guru Dev, please instruct me. Guru Dev, please bless me. Guru Dev, please come to my home. Oh, Guru Dev, yes, my shishya, yes, my shishya. A shishya is actually a big headache. And it also it's true. The shishya becomes a, the servant of the guru. Nah, nah. The guru becomes the servant of the shishya. He is always looking, how are you? How is everything? Are you following this program? Uh, like that. The, the, the true relationship of a guru to his disciple is that he is serving the disciple. But it's like you could say, any new disciple is like any new child you have. Now ask the fathers how much work you get when you have a new child. <laughs> oh my God. You have two, no? Who has children of you? How many people? How many you have? One. One. Who else has children? One. One. Four children. Three. So every new child means a big package more. And that's a job. So it's the same type of situation when you're accepting a shishya, you're becoming responsible. And that's a very big job. So therefore, when the disciple asks the guru, please accept me as your disciple, that means now he can run away. He has to look after me. So that's a good advantage for me, but I should also reciprocate and become very useful in his service. I mean, to make a shishya guru disciple very productive, very uh, fulfilling, as a high standard has to be applied. Not like here in India, they have the kind of a tradition, it's called Kula Guru. And you get a guru and he gives you a mantra and then he disappears. <coughs> and only on the day of Guru Purnima, you go give a few rupees and he says, blessings, blessings, and that's it. More or less. I mean, there's all kinds of variety, but Kula Guru is not the idea of what we get from our spiritual succession. So therefore, let's see what happens after you accept the Guru. After Guru Karan comes Bhajanakriya. Then you have to learn how to do Bhajan. Under the guidance of the spiritual master, you have to learn what it means to offer everything to Krishna. All the elements, the shastras, the study, bhajana kriya is very nice. This is our daily life. And then the next step comes anartha nivriti. <coughs> and anartha nivriti means there are so many unwanted things lingering inside of us. To get rid of these things, that is called anartha nivriti. Anartha means unwanted. Like you have this dog stool there in front of, of Hanuman. That is not nice. Huh? That's unwanted. It has to be removed. So we have to remove it as a service to Hanuman. <coughs> so, in, when you watch television, especially if you watch American movies, no, not right now, not right now. <laughs> now you're cleaning other stuff. <laughs> uh, there, he said, after you watch an American movie of the normal ones, you have to more or less take one week bath in the Ganga to get purified of all that nonsense which you just let come in your eyes and your ears. Oh, killing, killing, this and that, all this nonsense, you know. And so, Anatta Nivriti is a very serious process. Get rid of the unwanted 
get rid of the contamination. How you get rid of that? By bhajan and kriya. By your bhajan. Your bhajan is your cleaning process. You clean yourself by the mantras. You clean yourself by eating pushadam. You clean yourself by listening to the pravachan, to the lectures. You clean yourself by coming to Rishikesh, Vendavan, Mayapur, by being on pilgrimage. <clears throat> you clean yourself by sharing with others what you have received. As many types of bhajan kriya, bhajana kriya elements, like the worship of Takurji, is also very important. Uh, therefore, our cleaning process. So, then after you do this very faithfully, you will reach a stage called Nishta. Nishta means inside of you, you feel relief. Oh my Lord, I found my home. Nishta. It's very, very nice. But Nishta is, is kind of a passive satisfaction. But the Lord wants more, so he gives you Ruchi. Ruchi means the intense desire to do something. Oh, yes, I want to do something. You know, it doesn't go like click, 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 click like steps, it also intermingles. Sometimes a new devotee has a great ruchi for doing seva, for going to Arctic. Like when you go to Jaipur <clears throat> and you go to Mangal Arctic. Wow. You stay there at 4.30 in the morning and there's hundreds of people in the door waiting for the door to open. They're waiting there. I want to be the first one to see Govindaji. And when the doors open, they whoo, they're all inside. That is devotion. That is that is ruchi. So sometimes we get this ruchi, this feeling. I want to do it. And this ruchi is a part of the process to take you further. Because after ruchi, come to ashakti. Shakti means that there's no more craving for the material things. Before, when you're in Anartha Nivriti, there are cravings, but you are conquering them. You're, you're going against the cravings and you're getting a higher taste. When you're controlling your senses and you're dedicating yourself to devotional ideas, then you become, you get some higher taste. Like for example, we get up early here in the morning, we take our Ganga Snan, that requires some taste. Hmm? You want to do that and you feel very happy doing it. But the mind says, no, no Ganga Snan, very good. <laughs> huh? But the heart says, but it will, it will make your whole heart so full of happiness to be in contact with, with the divine waters. So, <clears throat> Ashakti, Ashakti, the, then so many levels of the divine love developing inside of you which will be there. That is a long, that is a science which is being explained in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. There it's explained that after a Shakti, then there will be different stages of bhavas. There will be that. And finally, there will be Prema. And after Prema, there are many other levels of Prema which are developing. So, Mahabhav is the feeling of divine bhav in the purest of the pure, which is our Srimati Radhi, Radhi, Radhi. She has this fulfilled Mahabhav. 
and this Mahabhav became Mahaprabhu to distribute the bhakti in this world. But there's a little bit of the bhakti history and the, the also the, the, the bhakti steps to go ahead. Good morning, that is um <laughs> that that will actually give us uh, an access to Prem when we come in contact with the Prem Mantra. Prem Mantra is another name for Maha Mantra because Maha Mantra means Mahabhav. The highest love is there in the Prem Mantra. So therefore when we chant, I like the translation because Many people, they don't really get the whole idea. Oh my Lord, please let me be an instrument of your love. Prabhupada also used to say, Oh my Lord, please let me become a servant of your wish. But an instrument of your love because Mahabhav, Mahaprem, this is Rasa Raj, the, the supreme king of Rasa, Akila Rasamrita Murti, this is the Ananda Maya Abhyasat, that is beyond words. There's no translation in English for these words. You want to translate them, that well, you cannot say Maharaj is a big circle dance. <laughs> Plenty of people make circle dance, but it's not Maharaj. <laughs> Maharaj is something of the, the, the divine manifesting in fullest mercy for the souls who have purified themselves in total surrender. Something like that. And that is Primras. So, when we talk about love in Krishna consciousness, we actually talk about a world of love. We are not talking about just some state of consciousness, even though it requires a state of consciousness. It, it is, uh, it is uh, like very beautiful. When I went to South Chile, there was a big billboard on the road. And that billboard said, where do you want to spend eternity? God. Have you ever thought about that? Where do you want to spend eternity? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a common billboard to see in this in the street, no? So where do you want to spend eternity? That's up to you. You have to decide that. You are invited to eternal love. Where? How? Where is my consciousness? In the material world, in a material body, that's not possible because, you know, 100 years maximum. And of the 100 years, the last 25 will be more trouble than anything else. <coughs> so, uh, sometimes the body doesn't even last 40 years, you know. So, every day, every day you have here is another gift another divine present for doing devotional things, for being there in connection with the, with the divine, with the loving, with the powerful, with what, what we can only aspire for. So I pray for all of you in the name of Ganga, in front of Hanuman, let us pray. Oh my Lord! Oh my Lord. Please let me be, Please let me be. An, instrument of your love. an instrument of your love. O Gangama, o Gangama. Let, me serve you. let me serve you. Let me serve Mother Bhumi. Let me serve, Mother Bhumi. Let me serve my family. Let me serve, my family. Let me serve humanity. Let me serve, my family. let me serve the environment. By behaving accordingly. By behaving accordingly. By trying my level best. 
Attachments, so that all my other attachments, they will disappear. Oh, my dear Lord, this process of yoga was given by you. You are Yogeshwara, the friend of all, the powerful force of creation. Now I am your small little child, pretty hopelessly lost in this world. But by your kindness, you have manifested within my heart, Esti Paramatma. Please give me the right inspiration. The determination, the determination to follow the ideals, follow the ideals which, you which you have shown to me, so that I may not lose my joy of going towards you, going towards you step by step, step, by step. Pare, 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 until I reach. Until I reach on the way back to home. On the way back to home. Back to Godhead. Back to Godhead. Jai Nitai. Jai Nitai. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Jai So this is also a pledge, our personal pledge. Now, I have to go, very important thing to do this morning. So I won't be here, but you can all continue your, your studies and tonight, some of you are already traveling by train, right? So I'll see you. We should all be here because there's another drama presentation today for also the closing festival. Last night we had a very nice uh, meeting in the Arctic also. You could see how many wonderful people have come here. Really, it is a, a special get together, but Today will be the closing section and, and many other more important things will also happen. Unfortunately, I have to go to this meeting, but also I want to be back because the Minister of Yoga comes today. The Minister of Ayush. And India is the only country with a yoga minister and a health minister for Ayurveda. Uh, that was started by Mr. Mo Narendra Modi. He established such a ministry. So the minister coming here is very important and we also have lots of work with him coming up. So just be there. Don't space out when these things are there. Also make those connections, especially our team, especially our Vindavan team, because we are here for permanent service. Those who are just coming here for a few days and then they go back, then you take the spirit of seriousness of what is going on from the energy. Yesterday we had another very big, big news. Big news. On the March 24, the World Water Day will be celebrated in Rishikesh with the 50 years uh, anniversary of the Beatles coming to Rishikesh. When they came to meet the Maharishi right here behind, that time was a kind of a beginning of the yoga movement in the world. So that will be celebrated as a World Water Day and we'll bring <coughs> the Amazonas Festival the Ganga Amazonas Festival from South America here. That means Chuchumerchan, 
a terciopelados, Dr. Krapula, some very important people will come here and we will have a very major celebration which will, the details are just being worked out, which will be a, a, a call to the world for water consciousness, to really start looking after the sacred waters, which is a crucial thing all around the world, especially in some countries the rivers are in very difficult situations and the people are very sick because of that. So that is that that will be and that festival in the twenty fourth of March oh, this year. No, two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. <laughs> that will be the preparation. <laughs> That will be the preparation for the 2019 Kumbha Mela, which is the, the main encounter of the natives. That means the First Nations. The First Nations will be present here in Rishikesh in, on the way to Kumbha Mela. It's very beautiful, very, very intensive. It'll be a different type of yoga experience because you could call it Pachamama Yoga, Bhumi Mata Yoga, because it's a, it's a deep commitment. And of course, you are all invited if God allows you to come back to India for that. If not, this will also be expanded into a chanting, like what this, uh, this the body who's organizing all this event here, he started 20 years ago the, um, what was it called, chanting, I forgot, the, it's, a, it's a big movement in the United States, uh, chanting for the water, something like that. What was that, Kalki? Not here. Okay, so, just that you can put it onto your calendar, no? So because of that, I won't have much time for questions this morning. But I'm so happy to see all of you. Wish you all the best for your wonderful life. That you will be successful. Successful on this beautiful path of this beautiful life in this beautiful world towards the beautiful eternity. And that's where we should invest our energy. That's what our Sukriti is meant for. <laughs> the, the joke. Uh, people have Facebook book friends. And some, some sandwich company in New York. I don't know. The guy had a strange idea. He said, you get a free, you get a free sandwich for all, for 10 Facebook's friends you cancel. So <laughs> people were coming there by the thronging and all want to get free sandwiches cutting out the Facebook friends. <laughs> so it was just a way to show on Bogo's life, the Facebook friends. <laughs> uh, just, just living in a kind of a Facebook ego world and not living in the world of dedication to the divine. Because if you get a free sandwich and then you throw away bhakti, well, <laughs> that wasn't much, no? <laughs> Thank you. And see you soon. And those who are coming to Mayapur, so wonderful to be with you. If any one of you I won't see, because you're leaving and you won't go to Vindavan either then, you can come to my room quickly to say, special bye-bye, huh? but it's like that. We come together and we go out to take whatever we have received and share it with others because <coughs> the whole world is in great need. Jai Radhi. Yes. Come on. Uh.